I'm Lana, a member of Waterloo Rock Tree, a design team with approximately 30 undergraduate students located in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And this is our rocket, Kraken of the Sky. Kraken of the Sky, or COTS for short, is a 210 inch long NOS HTPB hybrid that is simulated to attain an apogee of 27,400 feet and a max velocity of Mach 1.07. Starting with the pointy end, um, the nose cone is made using a hand layup vacuum bag process. The profile is LD hack for optimal performance at transonic velocities. The part, as you can see, was laid up successfully and now needs to be trimmed and painted. The body tubes are made using an infusion process with fiberglass sleeving. Although we have yet to make a full body tube, we did characterize the permeability of the laminate by infusing a few strip of representative fiberglass plies. Next, we will infuse the full three foot long body tube and test to failure in a three point bend test. The oxidizer tank aft skirt transmits the thrust from the combustion chamber to the rest of the rocket and is made up of three T cross-section skirt beams with a buckling failure mode. These skirt beams allow for ease of access of the injector valve and fill plumbing. The fill disconnect hatch has the main purpose of enabling the fill arm to reach the internal plumbing of the rocket and fill the ox tank with oxidizer. This is done by utilizing a hinge spring and magnet attachments to ensure the safe closing of the rocket hatch. The rest of the hatch design is 3D printed, including the hinge arm, spacer, and hatch. The fins have a flutter velocity of 3,800 feet per second and are fabricated using a tip-to-tip -tip vacuum bag layup. And lastly, a circular arc boat tail at the base of the rocket reduces base drag and will be made using a similar process to the nose cone. The mission concept of operations of Kraken of the Sky is made up of nine individual phases. The first of these is pre-launch operations, where the rocket is assembled, raised on the launch tower, and filled. In this stage, avionics and payload begin acquiring data. The engine ignites and the rocket takes off with an off-the-rail velocity of 32 meters per second and static stability margin of 1.63 calibers. In the boost phase, the engine continues to burn for 25 seconds, reaching a velocity of Mach 1.07. After motor burnout, COTS coasts to an apogee 26,340 feet. The parachute deploys in a reefed state at apogee, slowing the rocket to a velocity of 34 meters per second. At 1,500 feet above ground level, the parachute disreefs, slowing the rocket to 9 meters per second for ground contact. Propulsion was super busy the past few months, designing and prototyping upgrades to our Kismet rocket engine. Up to IREC 2019, the way our team measured propellant level on board was estimating it with a live load cell reading. This was problematic because the rocket was partially propped from the side by fill arm, etc., and as such lacked precise fill data. This year, we developed a fill sensing system using a magnetic floater inside the oxidizer tank and Hall effect sensors on the outside, reporting to client side RLCS over CAN. The new system is a lot more accurate since we can now know when the oxidizer passes a certain level inside the tank, as well as verifying that the tank is sufficiently filled before launch. Sitting on top of the oxidizer tank is a new SRAD pneumatically actuated vent valve. Designed to remotely manage the filling process and pressure of our oxidizer tank, it shuts off flow of oxidizer through it when supplied with pressurized air. It also features several improvements over our previous electronic linear actuator valve, including less weight, a reduction in number of components to three machine parts, and a spring to ensure the valve fails open if air pressure is lost. At the fiery end of the engine, in place of the geometrically approximated graphite nozzle our previous rockets had, Ghost Pepper, our new nozzle, features optimized topology and uses water's latent heat in an internal reservoir to stay cool. 3D printed from Inconel, it is lighter and stronger than its predecessor and more akin to a proper conventional bell nozzle. The added efficiency and weight saving helps our rocket reach a higher apogee. Once fill is done, flight checks come out clear and we're ready to proceed. Fast, our pneumatic injector valve will be the only thing blocking oxidizer from flowing into the combustion chamber. That is, of course, until it's needed to not do that anymore, during which it receives a signal from RLCS to actuate. An air reserve then releases high-pressure air to move the pneumatic piston with great enough torque to ensure it's open. At the entrance of the combustion chamber, the engine features the same showerhead injector as our 2019 rocket, Shark of the Sky, designed to vaporize the oxidizer and achieve choked flow. 
This helps reduce combustion instabilities and lower the likelihood of nitrous oxide decomposing upstream, as well as increasing the pressure drop. If we were to actuate the valve without proper ignition, though, we'd be dumping nitrous oxide through the injector and combustion chamber like crazy, and would essentially have a spicy bottle rocket, which is dangerous, and is why the ignition system is designed for reliability. Right before the engine is fired, electrical current driven by RLCS heats up nichrome wire and sets a combustible ignition puck on fire. The ignition puck, commonly referred to as McFire, sits near the top of the combustion chamber and keeps burning for about a minute, during which black smoke comes out of the nozzle, signaling RLCS control personnel to switch the injector valve open and launch the rocket, the culmination of well over a year's hard work. For our recovery system this year, we decided to pursue a new single separation reefing architecture. The separation event is still executed by CO2 and shear pins, but thereafter only a single parachute is deployed in a semi-open state instead of a drogue. It is then allowed to fully open only closer to the ground through the release of a special control line. Apart from being a very interesting system to design, this method also allows for some weight savings and potentially simplifies the system architecture as a whole. The new system was researched and tested using a truck on a test track. A custom testing rig was designed and built that would allow us to deploy the parachute behind the truck as it accelerates down the test track. A number of different experiments were then conducted in this configuration. By also mounting an anemometer and load cell, detailed data could be collected and analyzed about the aerodynamic properties of the parachute under different conditions. This will allow us to select the right line lengths to hit our desired descent rate with the current system. We are very excited to test the system in action. A major test that was unfortunately postponed due to COVID was our helicopter drop test. Using a custom deployment rig as shown, we plan to drop the top part of our rocket out of a charted helicopter. Thus, we are in the final stages of preparation to test a large portion of the entire rocket under realistic conditions using a dead weight. We hope that this validates our overall design. Kraken of the Sky is controlled with a distributed modular system known as Rocket Cam. First flown in 2019, the team has been working hard to develop new systems and capabilities that take advantage of this modular network. One new system is Live Telemetry. This upgraded radio system will allow telemetry data to be received from the rocket during flight, allowing real-time monitoring of the vehicle's performance and providing a backup tracking system to the off-the-shelf Big Red B GPS unit. While there are many new electrical systems on Kraken of the Sky, such as the new fill sensing system, improved versions of the GPS data logging and actuator control boards, one of the biggest new systems is remote arming. This system allows the altimeters to be powered on remotely using rocket cam, eliminating the need for operators to stand near the rocket while the pyrotechnics are armed. In addition, remote arming allows data about the health of the recovery system, such as battery voltage and arming status, to be reported in real time. It even makes it possible to confirm that all the e-matches in the recovery section are correctly attached right before launch. Currently, we are also finalizing the design of a Raspberry Pi-based camera system. The goal is to use two of these camera modules, controlled over rocket cam, along with ultra-wide angle lenses to record a 360-degree view of the rocket's flight. While rocket cam controls everything that flies, RLCS, or the Remote Launch Control System, is what gets us into the air. It consists of two units. One unit sits near the launch tower and handles communications with the rocket. It also controls the ground-based valves, fill disconnect system, and igniter, which allow the rocket to be filled and launched remotely. The other is the client-side unit. This unit displays data from the rocket and ground systems and features the control switches which are used to launch the rocket, including the literal big red button. As the rocket soars through the atmosphere, breaking the sound barrier, 
Little do you know that there are tiny subatomic particles whizzing through the rocket at even faster speeds, near the speed of light. Our panel of this year will take advantage of the secondary cosmic radiation zooming through our rocket to investigate the radiation shielding properties of some exotic materials. As a functional scientific experiment, the payload will be housed in a 3U cube set, custom designed as a standalone structure with small internal modules carrying the materials and scintillators, our radiation detectors. Powered by a family of PCBs that work together, payload electrical is completely independent of the rest of the rocket. Papa board is in charge of power and data management, while Mama board plays the crucial role of detecting radiation. And of course, we can't forget the daughter boards, gathering sensor info and providing radio group support. Altogether, these components of the payload work together to gather groundbreaking data during our rocket flight. And that's our rocket cracking out of the sky. If you have any questions, queries, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us by email or on Facebook. And a huge thank you to all of our sponsors for their continued support throughout this pandemic.